He took me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of her praise, hallelujah. If I got it wrong, you have to forgive me. Oh my goodness, it's been forever. That's one thing I liked about the old Mennonite church that we used to go to when we were first married. They sang all of the hymns. And then we went to another church that was more evangelical. And, you know, we lost all these old hymns. And that's one thing that really always saddened me because, you know, I like the old ways of living. A lot of people have asked me about church and a lot of people have wondered, you know, do I go to church? We went for about 30 years to a very old fashioned Mennonite church. Then we left the Mennonite church when our children were older and we went to an evangelical church. And that's where we went for many years. And then we started having church at home. About two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago, I had church Sunday services every Sunday on another channel that I had. And I stopped doing that, but I really, my heart's desire would be someday to get back into that. I really enjoyed that. It was something that was, a lot of people came to it and we had a lot of fun. We actually were filming another church service. And then YouTube's rules and regulations came that we weren't allowed to do that anymore. And that really saddened me. But a friend of mine, we had a channel and it was prayer and praise. And we really enjoyed that channel. And I miss that. I miss that a lot. So to answer your question, yes, we've gone to Mennonite church most of our married life and then an evangelical church. And that is where we went. And then the last two years we had church at home. So there's the, there's the answers to that major question. I don't think I've ever answered it before. My parents grew up, they went to a very plain Mennonite church. They all had black vehicles. They were called black bumpers, and that meant that the bumpers on their vehicles were painted black. They were the plainest of the Mennonites. And then by the time I was born, my parents had left the Mennonite church, and we went to a charismatic church, and that's how I grew up. I grew up in a charismatic evangelical church, and that was how I was raised my whole life as a child. When we talk about Mennonites, there are so many different forms of Mennonites. Not all Mennonites are the same. And depending on your area, Mennonites are different. I grew up with the fundamental strict Mennonites. There are traditional values that women stayed at home. That was the traditional value. But I'm talking about 50 years ago that women tend to stay at home when they had children. And they were supposed to stay at home even after the children were grown. Mennonites have changed throughout history. So on my father's side, the Mennonites, the women do not wear the bonnets or they don't wear the covering. They wear bandanas or they wear doilies on their heads. They look like doilies and that's what they will wear. But on my mother's side, the women wear the bonnets that are stringed and tied and they are like the Amish. Typically, an Amish mother will not work away. Amish mothers do not work away. And so I was raised plain Mennonite, plain Mennonite, not the Mennonites that you see today where they do work away and things like that. They're so different. It's just so a wide variety. And that is because different churches, different groups of Mennonites, they interpret the Bible differently. And so in Titus 2, they interpret that so differently than what some of the modern Mennonites do in this day. Like we never were around houses that had modern things. Our homes were like mine, were a lot of wood, a lot of, a, a lot of old looking things. <laughs> it's just so hard to explain. Black Bubber Mennonites, that's how I was raised in that belief. You know, my grandma, they had a black bumpered car because they felt that chrome was something that was proudful. And so that was the way that they were raised and taught. When we came over from Switzerland, you know, there was, they branched out into different communities. And so that is, that's where I come from. And sometimes it's really hard because coming from Ephrata, Pennsylvania, that is where I was born and raised, and there, that is the area, and we are very dutchy. So that area is very dutchy compared to somewhere else. And if you go to southern Lancaster County, people talk different. So it's all in the way in the community that you grew up in. 
There is no clear cut answer for what is a Mennonite and what is an Amish, what is a Catholic, you know, what is, what is a Presbyterian, what is a Lutheran, because people tend to go by their roots and then maybe they branch off into other thinking. They're all denominations. The Bible is not a denomination. And what happens is when people interpret the Bible, they interpret it in so many different ways. We all can interpret the Bible differently. We can have a lineup of eight people here, read the same scripture, and everybody is going to somehow have a little bit of a different idea of what that scripture means. Because we interpret things different. I could read a scripture and maybe five years later, read that same scripture and it can mean something different to me than it did five years before. And so that is why you see all of these different denominations when you see the Catholics, when you see the Jehovah's Witnesses, when you see you know, Jewish people, everybody has a different philosophy based on scriptures. And you know, with Mennonites, it's a really, really broad range. There are some Mennonites that wear bandanas and wear jeans and wear long pants. While most Mennonites won't wear long pants, most of them wore skirts because they believed in the Bible that the female and the male should be totally different. The female needs to wear feminine clothes and the male wears male clothes. <laughs> but trying to explain it is something really hard unless you lived in it. You want to go by the bonnet. So I can walk into a store and I can tell by the way the bonnets that the women are wearing, their different plainness. So my grandma wore a bonnet with the strings attached that were tied under the chin. My grandma was the strictest Mennonite. And then slowly her daughters, my mother, wore the coverings with the strings that were hanging loose. And so they were just flapping in the air in the breeze. And that meant they weren't quite as strict. Then after a while, they cut the strings off their coverings. They had the mesh bonnet. Then after a while, the Mennonites decided, well, that seemed a little, that was a lot. So then they wore the doilies. And you see a lot of that now in the area where I was born and raised, the women wearing the doilies. Then after a while, they take the covering off and they don't wear any coverings. I've always had mixed feelings about it all. I've always thought it was, you know, something very feminine about wearing a bandana. I've always liked the feminine look of that. I did wear skirts and, and dresses for a long time, but for practicality, I loved wearing long pants. In the winter time, my best friend, Sharon, would wear long pants under her dresses because it helped keep you warmer. And you know, I come to the conclusion of this. The conclusion is, I believe that we can get caught up in the law of the Bible and forget the real point of the Bible. And that is, the real point of the Bible is that Jesus died on the cross to save us of our sins. And if we ask the Lord into our heart, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And it doesn't matter about the outward look of us so much. And it doesn't matter of all of that because Jesus looks at our heart. And while we do want to read the scriptures and interpret the scriptures, and while we do want to follow the scriptures, we can get so intertwined in the law of it. You know, the Amish live by a law that's rigid and strict, that they almost forget that faith is not by works. And it's so many times my plain relatives believe that the only way to get to heaven is by the works. And so they don't know if they get to heaven and they just keep working and working and hope they get there. And my parents realized way, way back in their life that it isn't by your works that salvation, it's by asking for forgiveness and asking the Lord to come into your heart and asking the Lord to change you and make you new. And that Jesus' blood was shed and he died on the cross for our sins. And that it's not by the works, even though we do the best that we can. We will always fail because we're imperfect. But if we ask for forgiveness, Jesus is there to forgive us. And so that is why I get into the more charismatic part of it. I have faith in what the Mennonites taught and I have faith in what the charismatic movement taught and the evangelicals taught. And so I keep both of them. I don't know anybody 
who hasn't been raised with different religious thoughts. I don't know anybody who has always just stuck to one. I believe that we are made up of a lot of thoughts and beliefs. A lot of people watch my videos and they don't believe in anything. And that is their thought process. But I don't believe that anybody just says, I am this fully. I believe that we come up with the thoughts and what we feel is right in our hearts when we interpret the Bible. There's a lot of people that, you know, believe in a lot of things with the Bible and they interpret that in a way that they feel is best for them. And I know that without the Lord and his holy word, I know I would be lost long ago. And I'm just so thankful that I have God in my life. And I hope I answered a little bit about the Mennonites and about where I come from and, and my background and church. To me, church, we are the body of Christ. We are the temple and wherever we gather, in the Bible it says we are not to forsake the gathering of our family and gathering of ones in our belief. But yet in times like this, I don't think there's anything wrong in having your time at home and studying God's word. And I believe that through times like this, we can focus every day of our life on doing what is right. You know, being a Christian doesn't, going to church 